Good morning. In this short video, I will give a brief presentation of the theoretical computation of physics track. So without trying to be too rigorous, uh, I think it's a plausible definition of theoretical physics, that of a mathematical representation of physical systems. Of course, it's a very special mathematical representation that needs to agree with observation. What physical system are we talking about? If we look at the disciplines and areas of investigation in physics, which are normally covered in a physics department, for example, the one at uh, Trento University, one immediately notices that uh, physical systems under consideration span over a wide range of uh, energy scales and length scales, uh, comprising many, many orders of uh, gap, uh, magnitudes and differences. So one might be led to think uh, that in order to become proficient enough in any of these subjects to reach the edge of research, one needs a very specific training and therefore start uh, choosing the preferential field of interest very early in the education. On the other hand, uh, physics and theoretical physics in particular displays an enormous amount of uh, unitarity and universality. Uh, what do I mean by that? Uh, there are many features in physical phenomenology that are in common to systems that have nothing in common in terms of energy scales, momentum scales and therefore are somehow ubiquitous throughout all the fields that you see displayed in this chart. As a specific example, let me mention the concept of spontaneous symmetry breaking. As you will learn in the master program, spontaneous symmetry breaking is a process through which a system changes its inner structure, and in particular changes the structure of the ground state. And it does so in a way that reduces the symmetry of the ground state. The most uh, uh, famous example is the ferromagnetic first transition, where you have initially spins pointing in all possible directions in the paramagnetic, paramagnetic phase, and then all of a sudden, across this transition, spin point along one specific direction, and therefore breaking the rotational symmetry. However, the same idea of spontaneous symmetry breaking can be found in all the fields that you find uh, sketched in this chart. It is found in particle physics through the Higgs mechanism that gives origin to the mass of the matter fields. It is found in nuclear physics where you have a chiral phase transition which basically lowers the mass of the pine relative to that of the other hadrons. It is found in condensed matter theory where you have superconductivity in ultra-cold matter where you have superfluidity and Bose-Einstein and condensate. And it is also found in astrophysics, uh, for example, in the core of neutron stars and in certain cosmological models. So based on the idea that there are concepts that are central to all fields, the way we propose uh, the education in physics emphasizes tools and pillars that are ubiquitous and only lead students to specialize to their preferential field of interest at the later stage of the education. So what are the pillars that we are talking about? Many of these systems, although not all, um, are based on quantum mechanics, and therefore you need to strengthen your education in quantum mechanics. Some of the system, many of them actually, involve a large numbers of degrees of freedom, and therefore you need also more advanced tools in statistical mechanics. And in addition to this, there is a concept of field and field theory that is uh, usually not uh, introduced within the education in the bachelor, uh, course, but become central uh, in the in the master course in theoretical and computational physics, as I will elaborate a little bit uh, further in a moment. But once you have you know, written a the theory, uh, it doesn't mean you can solve the theory and make contact with experiment. And therefore, we need two more pillars to complete this chart. And they are, on the one hand, computation, and on the other hand, approximation. So they're not exactly the same thing, the same concept. In particular, by computation, we refer to the you know, act of translating a mathematical problem in a form that can be solved by a computer to any 
degree of accuracy. And the degree of accuracy you can reach in the calculation only depends on the amount of computational resources you might be able to provide. For example, if you want to study Newton's equation, you can use Verlet algorithm, provided you choose a time step sufficiently small, your result would be arbitrarily accurate. Approximation methods, on the other hand, do not share the same ambitions, ambition in terms of accuracy, but have a, a much more insight in terms of uh, physical uh, content. Let me be more clear. Suppose you want to understand the spectrum of the hydrogen atom in perturbation theory. Then clearly, although at each stage your calculation is never arbitrarily accurate, each stage of the calculation brings in physical insight. For instance, you understand the origin of the degeneracy splitting and you know lifting in the spectrum, for example, by the Zeeman effect. So as you can see, approximations uh, bring in improvement in the accuracy, but even when they remain semi-qualitative or semi-quantitative, they bring in physical insight. So in some sense, approximation and computation are complementary to one another. In addition to this pillar, typically in the course, you're led to, to learn more mathematics, probability and statistics, if you do statistical mechanics, uh, differential geometry, if you do general relativity, information theory, if you do quantum information. And now if you start drawing line that connects all these lines here, all these, all these blocks in this chart, you start building disciplines that are normally covered in our master course. For instance, if you connect field theory with quantum mechanics, you have quantum field theory, which is the tool required to study relativistic quantum mechanical system, particle and high energy particle physics. Or if you connect field theory with statistical mechanics, you get statistical field theory, which is used in, uh, in the analysis of phase transition and critical phenomena. If you connect field theory with differential geometry, uh, you know, you get general relativity, uh, which has applications in cosmology and astrophysics, and so on and so forth. I will not cover all of these disciplines, but the point that I want to make is that now if you look at the titles of this uh, buzzwords and, and you can probably map it in a one-to-one -one correspondence to many of the courses that are offered in this track, uh, somehow showing the reasoning behind the structure of the course we offer to the students at the University of Trent. Last but definitely not least, in the master uh, program, uh, there is one more fundamental competence we offer to the students. And is the ability of uh, performing physical modeling. So basically, there is uh, the idea is that there is some kind of art involved in the understanding of what are the relevant degrees of freedom in a physical system and being able to couple these degrees of freedom in some effective or fundamental Hamiltonian or Lagrangian in a way that is able, on the one hand, to be solvable. And therefore, you know, you can make contact to the experiment and on the other hand, to be sufficiently accurate for the comparison with the experiment to be meaningful. Now, uh, like I said before, there is some kind of art of making the right approximation and the right description. And like all form of arts, the best way to learn them is through uh, practice and direct exposure. So for this reason, we do encourage the students to take courses in different subjects, not to specialize too much on courses focused on their own preferential field of interest. Indeed, by looking at how physical model is implemented in different contexts, one widens his or her perspective and ultimately, we believe, becomes more creative when it comes to perform research in a specific field. Okay, so in this last chart, I uh, report to the same uh, disciplines that uh, we discussed before, and I associate to each discipline name of the faculty people in the theoretical computation of physics group that are involved in research. They can offer theses, and of course, uh, along this, uh, along with these options, there are also important and exciting national and international collaboration being established by the members of the group that can also be uh, uh, integrated into the uh, thesis 
uh, final thesis research. Having said all this, I'm left with saying good luck for your studies and your career. Goodbye. Hello, everyone, and thanks to Pietro Faccioli for the nice introduction. In the second part of our presentation, we will provide a short but comprehensive overview of the different activities within the theoretical and computational physics laboratory. Let's start with nuclear physics and astrophysics. Despite many years of intense research, nuclear physics is still characterized by many open relevant questions, which can be nowadays answered by new innovative approaches. The research in nuclear physics is carried on by Winfried Leidemann, Giuseppina Orlandini, Francesco Pederiva, and Alessandro Roggero. The central point here is the combination of modern approaches to the description of nuclear nucleon forces directly grounded on the symmetry of QCD, the fundamental theory behind strong interaction, with the most advanced theoretical and computational techniques that allow to solve the Schrodinger equation, both for ground state and structural properties, and for excited states and dynamical evolution. The target is to study, for example, nuclear clustering and nuclear reaction, quantities relevant for neutrino physics experiment and hypernuclear physics. After the recent breakthrough discoveries related with the detection of gravitational waves, nuclear and the relativistic astrophysics have become very active and lively research fields. These kind of researches are carried on in our department by Winfried Leidemann, Francesco Pederiva, and Albino Perego. The astrophysical processes in which compact objects, namely neutron star and black holes, are formed and destroyed are investigated by ab initio relativistic hydrodynamics model. These sophisticated computational models must be combined with detailed input from nuclear physics, for example, the equation of state of nuclear matter or neutrino matter cross section, and together they predict signals for the newborn multi messenger astrophysics. This is essential to exploit the most catastrophic phenomena in our universe as laboratory for fundamental physics. Let's move on to the statistical and biological physics researches. The common denominator of Pietro Faccioli's scientific activity concerns cross-disciplinary application of theoretical physics tools, such as path integral, renormalization group, quantum and statistical field theory, to several condensed matter and biomolecular systems. In particular, Faccioli and co-workers develop advanced variational approximation based on path integral approaches to investigate rare structural transition and quantum field theory schemes to study the dissipative quantum dynamics of electronic excitation in biomolecules. In a recent project, quantum computing is employed in combination with statistical mechanics and artificial intelligence to investigate dynamics and thermodynamics of soft matter. Topological properties are preserved through the formation and their global character often challenges physical models. Natural polymers such as DNA and proteins, on the other hand, have evolved to optimize topological properties, forming knots, links, and even networks. Using advanced computational methods, Luca Tubiana aims at modeling the emergence and the consequences of topological properties in natural systems, and at studying how they can be exploited to design novel smart material. Moreover, Virginia Agostiniani works at the rigorous mathematical derivation of, the, of dimensionally reduced models, which contributes to the design of self-folding structure in the field of active materials and to the understanding of the morphing phenomena in many natural systems. Raffaello Potestillo and his team work on the development of simplified or coarse-grained models of biomolecules with the aim of making their simulation more efficient and intelligible. Simple models of complex systems have the power of separating important information from noise. But doing this right is a hard task, where biology, physics, information theory, and machine learning have to join forces. Gianluca Lattanzi's research is aimed at the application of computer simulations and molecular modeling to the investigation of several systems of biological and technological interest. 
His main objective is the characterization of this material by comparison with experimental data whenever available, employing an arsenal of technique ranging from density functional theory to atomistic and coarse grain models. We now move to the study of fundamental interactions. In the group of Luciano Vanzo and Massimiliano Rinaldi, we study many high energy phenomena related to cosmology, in particular inflation and dark energy, and black hole physics, in particular stability, singularities, information loss paradox. We use quantum field theory, including its extension to pure space and general relativity. We often consider extension of GR inspired by tentative formulation of quantum gravity, which is one of the most elusive open problem in modern physics. We mainly use analytical methods, but numerical ones are sometimes used. In collaboration with the Beck group, we also study analog models of gravity in Bose-Einstein condensates. A large part of the work of Virginia Agostiniani is also devoted to the study of geometrical properties of elliptic partial differential equations in the framework of classical potential theory and general relativity. After that, we present the researches in the, in the condensed matter theory group. Matteo Calandra and his team study the properties of material using analytical techniques relying on many body theory and computational approaches based on density functional theory. Besides mythological and theoretical developments, the most important topics are materials displaying large quantum effect, sometimes even at room temperature, such as 2D and quantum material superconductors and broken symmetry states in solids and materials for the energetic revolution. Last but not least, we present the activities of the back group. The Beck group investigates ultra-cold quantum gases of bosonic and fermionic atoms and their properties, including Bose-Einstein condensation and superfluidity. One aim is to understand their excitation and the emergence of macroscopic quantum properties. In collaboration with Massimiliano Rinaldi, we also investigate how they can be used to mimic the behavior of black holes. Another activity is on quantum optical system and quantum fluids of light, and how they can be used, for example, to generate exotic topological effect and produce a new generation of photonic devices. A strong research line exists also on quantum information processes, which is a cross-disciplinary endeavor involving various researchers of the theory laboratory. Targets include the solution of hard computational problem from biophysics to nuclear physics using quantum computers, or the understanding of how entanglement determines the property of quantum many-body system. The overreaching aim of all these activities are first to illuminate the exotic and counterintuitive behavior of the quantum world, and second to harness the novel effects that appear at these microscopic levels and to enable paradigmatically new technological abilities. So that's the end of our overview. Are you interested in theoretical and computational physics? Please feel free to contact people in the group and visit the websites listed in the slides. Ask also for suggestions on how to build your course plan. Master thesis on all presented topics are available. They will benefit of a very lively research environment due to the many synergies within the theory group and with experimental groups and due to our many international collaborations.